In this movie, I'll cover the selection improvements with Trim and Intersect. The Drag Select and Shift selection methods now apply to all parts of the Intersect tool. You could always drag select the first set of surfaces, but now you can do it for the second set as well. With Trim, you can now use the Shift key to add or remove surfaces to be trimmed. And Box Select has been added at the stage where you select the regions to keep or discard. And here a Reset option has been added to make complex selections easier. And finally, the Geometry Map tool now allows you to drag select the projecting curves. These changes can make a big difference to the speed of your workflow, so here are some examples. With this simple cup shape, I have these outer surfaces, some inner surfaces and a set of top surfaces. If I now intersect, I can drag select the first set of surfaces as before, but now I can also drag select the second set and it's smart enough to ignore the ones I've already selected and here are the curves on surface. With Trim, again I can drag select to choose the surfaces as before. But now I can also drag to pick multiple regions, so a single box selection replacing 16 separate clicks. For the top surfaces I can pick multiple boxes to choose a more complicated region, and this time I'll choose to discard. When the intersecting surfaces are harder to select, I'll use the old technique of selecting the first set of surfaces using layer selection. But now I can use a drag box to select the second set. And you can see that the curves on surface are quite intricate. And I'll use the layers again to make it easier to choose the trim regions. Sometimes the angle of the geometry means that you'll need a couple of selections to get the right result. And here on the profile surfaces, getting the view right will make it much easier to minimise the picking I'll have to do. So here I'll try an orthographic view. And if I now trim, I might start by trying to catch this thin section in the middle to keep. But if that gets too tricky, then I have the new reset button to clear the selection and so I can start again, maybe realising that the deleted parts are easier to select but I haven't had to stop and restart the trim tool. Now for projection, some users prefer the 3D trimming workflow, where you combine a projection and a trim in one tool. So here on these front fork surfaces, if I open the trim option window, I can choose 3D trimming and then project the curves in the Y direction. And then I need to get the view right for trimming, so here I'll use the view twist to be able to use my box select effectively to define the regions to keep. And I'm finding that I sometimes need to pay a bit more attention to the viewing to get the most out of the new box selection. With this automotive grille I've got these drafted hexagonal surfaces that need to be trimmed to the rear profile and I have some trimming surfaces ready here in red. It's no longer a problem to work on such a large quantity of surfaces. I can select the red surfaces again using the Layer tab, Intersect, and now I can drag select to get all the hexagon surfaces. And here you can see the curves on surface. Now for trimming, I need to get into a view that will help me do a box select. But it's still tricky to get a clear selection on these curved surfaces. So what I'm tending to do is overbuild my surfaces further than I used to. This makes it much easier when I trim to use a box to choose the regions of the surface to discard. and that's a lot of surfaces trimmed in one go.
And if you're concerned about the extended surface data being in your exported files, you can simply use the Shrink to Trim plugin to reduce the extended size on all the surfaces before exporting. And my final example is this detergent bottle. And I want to look at two areas. The cap where I have some embossed text and the grip area where I have these embossed bumps. And I'll start with this grip area, which has been laid out as a pattern of complete spheres. I can intersect the spheres with the bottle surfaces as before, and I'll use the spacebar now to speed up my working. And here are the curves on surface. But the interesting part is when I come to trim. If I get the view right, where the parts I want to keep are closest to me, then the trim regions are selected using face selection, and I can get all the right sides chosen with one drag select, so that when I say keep, all the spheres are trimmed on the right side in one go. It won't always be possible to get such time savings in every trimming situation. For example, if I now have a look at the text on the cap where I've started to trim the surfaces, here, because of the intricate shapes and curved surfaces, I'm not going to be able to do a single selection of the trim regions. But even being able to select two or three at once will halve my workload. And where I can't use box select, I can now use the shift key to add surfaces to the trimming group before I select the regions. And finally, this embossing could have been created in a number of ways, by using the conform rig, for example. But I can also use the original geometry projection tool. And for this, I need to create the text as curves within a region on the screen. And I've used a 300 by 100 area in the XZ plane, which I've already entered into the geometry projection settings. Now previously I would have had to select each separate curve one by one. But now when I use the geometry projection, I can use a box select to choose them all in one go and create all of the curves on surface. It's a small change, but if you rely on this tool for your workflow, it'll make a big difference. The time savings in terms of the number of selections or clicks on the screen are significant when you compare intersecting and trimming in Alias 2012 with previous versions.